Let me, let me, let me thank Edith uh, uh, over the Cantor uh, Fitzgerald Relief Fund. Certainly want to thank you. And, and then let me, let me immediately let me thank uh, Howard and, and Allison for, uh, for just for their gracious generosity. I want to thank all the 55 friends uh, of Allison who came into the city of Houston. Come on, give it up to all of them. Look, each one of you are VIPs in the city of Houston. So uh, let, me, let me thank all of you for taking out of your precious time to, to be in the city of Houston. I want to thank all of the volunteers that's going to be helping out over the next couple of days um, in um, making a lot of kids and a lot of families uh, happy over the next couple of days, which will last, I believe, for a lifetime. I want to thank um, law enforcement, HPD, again, for just stepping up. Um, and for just doing what you do. Walter, uh, high school band back there. Thank you, thank you. Let me thank uh, Julie Estepech, uh, who's over the Director of Education. Thank you, Juliet. Juliet has just simply been fabulous. Um, um, ever since I appointed her over the Department of Education for the City of Houston back in 2016. And then I can't say enough for, for our champion, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. Thank you so very, very much. <laughs> Congresswoman was with me several days during Hurricane uh, Harvey at the uh, Houston Emergency Center, and then I've uh, been fighting for us in D.C. And, and as you can see, she's here today. Uh, and to join with me in saying thank you to all of our volunteers and people who are here uh, helping out. Let me just say this is a terrific, this is a terrific city. Uh, 2017 was an incredible year for the city of Houston, an incredible year. We hosted the Super Bowl, started off the Houston Super Bowl and hosted the NCAA Final Four. Then we hosted Harvey, uh, <laughs> you know. 50, 51 inches of rain uh, fell on the city of Houston and the, and the surrounding region. More, more water that fell on, on this area than on any other area at any time in, in the history of this country. Uh, and this wasn't just any type of storm. Uh, this, was a, this was a storm, um, Howard, that did not discriminate. Uh, it hit every sector of the city of Houston, 640 square miles. Um, initially, when Hurricane Harvey hit uh, the lower part of the Texas coast, Friday at 10 o'clock, I'll never forget, you know, at exactly at 10 p.m. on the Texas coast. Um, on Friday here in the city of Houston, it wasn't, it wasn't much of a problem. All day Saturday, it wasn't much, it wasn't much of a problem. In fact, many people thought we had, we had escaped. And then on Sunday during the day, still wasn't much much of an issue. Um, but right around 5 p.m., the National Weather Service uh, told us that there were three bands that were coming into the Houston area. And each one of those bands was carrying anywhere between seven to nine inches of, of, of rain. Um, it was at that point in time we knew uh, that we were going to be facing some problems. Uh, and there are a number of multifamily units that are in the low-lying areas that are flooded in 15, 16. We had set up, pre-set up some, sh some shelters. These were low-income families in those areas. And HPD and the fire department and others quickly went door to door knocking to get them out of their apartments, out of their homes, to put them in these shelters. The first band came, and they were correct, seven to nine inches. The second band came, and they were correct again, another seven to nine inches. And then the final th third band came, and again, seven to nine inches. Every bayou in the city of Houston was underwater, and pretty much the city itself was uh, shut down. Um, the Northeast Water Purification Plant was totally submerged. A couple of wastewater treatment facilities totally submerged, um, and all schools just stopped. And um, a few days late, later, uh, what we noticed was that this was not just vegetative debris, because in many storms, you know, it's the trees, the limbs, the branches, things of this nature. But from this storm, literally thousands of families uh, were emptying out their homes on, this, on, this, on, in, uh, on the curb. 
their furniture, their chairs, their refrigerators, their stoves, their clothes. Uh, in this facility alone, the George R. Brown, it served as a temporary shelter for more than 10,000 individuals, all in a matter of just a few days. Thousands of those individuals happened to be kids. And then there was a, a kid zone set up specifically uh, for, our, for our children to try to give them some normalcy. And so for about a week, a little over a week, this became the home for our friends uh, here in, in the city of Houston. At another large shelter, the George R. Brown, same thing. And there were several that were situated all over the city of Houston. But the impact of this storm was severe. It disrupted families and particularly, particularly sensitive to our children, seniors, uh, people with special needs, people who are already on the margins of life. You know, Allison, prior to the storm, the storm just pushed them down even further. And for our kids especially, you know, their lives were disrupted. And the question is, when you lose everything, you know, how do you explain that to your, to your kid? You know, how, how do your parent explain that? You know, um, because literally, just like this, just like that, everything was wiped away. And so over the next several weeks, now several months, we've been trying to, to establish some normalcy for the thousands of families that are still disrupted, 3,000 who are still in hotels, thousands of others who are living in homes with no sheetrock, no insulation, um, no furniture, okay? And when you drive around the city of Houston, you're not going to see the debris. The lights are on, the Astros won, million people were on the street. But for thousands and thousands of families, especially for our children, they find themselves either in hotels or they're living in homes without insulation or sheetrock, or they're living in tents, literally outside of their homes. Um, in school, and I certainly want to thank our schools and principals and teachers and counselors and others who have stepped up. <laughs> Give it up. I want to thank them. But now we're in the month of February for a storm that's hit us on August 25th. And for many, for many folk in our city, they have moved on with their lives. But for families who are already on the margins, low-income families pushed down, who are still trying to pull their lives together, they are still asking the question, you know, who will be with us? Who's gonna stand by us? Who's gonna support us? Well, over the next two days, uh, we have an answer for them. Uh, and literally, not just in monetary contribution, and I certainly want to thank the kind of, uh, Foundation Relief Fund for that. I want to thank uh, Howard and Allison for what they're doing, for their generosity. But what is also important, the bigger message, is that for these families, and especially for our vulnerable children, they know that they are people months after the storm who are still valuing who they are, still caring for, for, their, for, for them. Still, in, still investing in their lives because we have to constantly remind kids that people care and that they are important and they are valuable. And I certainly can appreciate that because I still live in the same community which I was born and reared, one of these low-income communities that were impacted by the storm, I still live right there in the midst of these kids. So I know what it means when people show up and when they uh, take of their valuable time, and especially when they come to a city where they do not live, when they invest in a city where they do not live, what that means. And I'll close by saying this, someone once wrote, that children are messengers that we send into the future for to a world that we ourselves may never see. What sort of message shall we send them? Well, today and tomorrow, we are sending a strong message into the future that we value our kids, that we're here to support our kids. And in supporting our kids, their parents, particularly their moms, who are struggling each and every day to make their lives more meaningful each and every day. And so um, 
Howard and Allison and uh, Edith, to all of the volunteers who are here from a grateful city on behalf of some very important children. I want to say thank you. Okay. I want to say thank you. The kids who didn't know where the next furniture was going to be, their bed, the pillow, the clothes, the toys, whatever the need may be, the contribution that you are making, uh, your presence says to them, people still care. In a world where there's so much negativity and toxicity, the beauty is people still care. And in a world where we seem like we have so much, people are still willing to give. And I want to say thank you. And then I, uh, my mom often said, you know, my mom was that maid who worked at the Rice Hotel not too far from here, raising nine kids by herself. But my mom often said to all nine of her kids, tomorrow, regardless of what's happening today, tomorrow will be better than today. Well, to Canton, Howard, Allison, the 55 friends who are here, all of the volunteers, to the congresswoman, law enforcement, tomorrow will be better than today. Amen. And when you put it in those kids' hand or their mom or their dad, you're saying to them, you're important, we value you, and we care. And their future will be brighter tomorrow than what it is today. So on behalf of a grateful city, from a grateful mayor, thank you so very, very much.